Kevin Cassidy is with us on the line. Good morning to you, Kevin. Morning, lads. How are you? All good. So, dear McConley, back in the mix for Dublin. Your initial thought on this, I think, on Twitter was hugely positive that he can really add something to Dublin in their drive for five. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for people who, who love football, we, we want to see Dear McConley back playing. Um, it's great for it's great for the game. It's great for the advertisement of the game. Um, from a Dublin point of view, I think it's also great. Uh, people are saying, I know, how, how did you come in at this stage in the season? But I think if you're part of that squad, you know Dermot, what he can bring. And you know the A versus B games. If he's delivering there and if he's good enough for a you know, 126 jersey, then, then so be it, you know. What's your sense in terms of his involvement? How much will he be involved? Will he be an impact sub? Could he be a potential starter come the end of the season? I actually think we'll see him before the end of the Super 8s. Um, Jim Gavin didn't bring him in just just to leave him sitting on the bench or not even on the, on the first 26. I think we'll actually see him sooner than we think. Um, and he could have been actually training with Dublin a lot sooner than what we, 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 we've heard. We only heard it this weekend. But again, that's, that's testament to, to the kind of setup that Dublin have. A player like Conley, the profile he has, he's been back in training with Dublin and nobody's heard anything until Jim releases it. So, you know, that's the kind of the mentality those guys have. And if there was any um, disgruntlement or anybody unhappy he was back, we would have heard something, you know. When he's away from the panel like that, when you're away from an intercounty setup like that, I presume the hunger and the appetite to compete again is at an all-time high. Yeah, definitely. He's had a good break. Let's not forget, you know, he's coming back fresh. There's a lot of guys there who've been there in the last five or six years. A lot of mileage in the clock, a lot of training. Jeremy would have kept himself in good shape. He's still playing with the club. Um, you know, you never lose that, that that desire to show what you can do. And I think more than anything, if he gets his chance, he'll, he'll prove people wrong. I was looking back at the 2011 All-Ireland semi-final cast, uh, Kevin. There was... Uh, a uh, player ratings done of this game and Dean Connolly managed to get a five uh, in the semi final in twenty eleven. So what was the Donegal secret to keeping him quiet that day? <laughs> the, the lowest rated Dublin player that day. Fifteen defenders maybe helped uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I suppose he was maybe just starting to come on the scene at that stage if we're just being honest, you know. Um, he was finding his feet at that level and the levels he took things to after that were just extraordinary. And like you say, you know, if anybody going to Crow Park or anybody sitting at home watching these games you want to see Dan McConnell play football because, you know, he's one of the very best that's ever played the game, in my opinion. So it's great to see him back. Kevin, he's effectively been away for two years now at the Dublin Senior setup, and it's fair to say the brand of football Dublin are playing has changed a bit in those two years. So, is it really possible he can just slot back in there um, and just, you know, I suppose uh, adjust to, to the way Dublin are playing now? I actually think, honestly, this guy could could play in any team in Ireland if, if he was given a few training sessions with them. Again, it all goes by. I know we can talk about structures and how people play and how, how teams set up, but at the end of the day, it's about the size five O'Neills and you give that man the, the ball and he's he's going to do magical things. Jim Gavin knows this, lads. We know, we know, you know, we know what, what's in the line here for Dublin. In the five in a row, you know, Jim's putting his neck in the line maybe by bringing Darren back. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't risk things unless he was sure he could add to the squad, you know. So if you were Jim Gavin, Kevin, and you wanted to start Jeremy Connolly, like we saw at the weekend, Dean Rock couldn't get even get into the starting team, which player do you leave out? That's a, that's a difficult one, but I actually believe that Jeremy's been back a lot 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 longer than, than we've been led to believe. Um, you know, I think you may, you, may, you may not see him this weekend because it's a bit early after just announcing he's back in the panel, but I think you'll see game time in the last, 20, in the last uh, Super 8 game. Who do you leave out? That's Jim Gavin's decision once he sees those A versus B games. And like I said, if Jeremy's not playing, he doesn't get a jersey. But if he is, and if you're in that Dublin squad and, and you know deep down in your heart that he's better than you and he's delivering, at the end of the day, I don't think you can have a problem if he's good enough to play because he's from Dublin, he's been there, he's done that and everything he's done for Dublin. So if he delivers an A versus B, um, I'm sure he definitely will get, get some kind of game time. Yeah, our, our information was that he wasn't back last week, that he trained with the club all week, including Saturday morning, that he was back with the Dublin squad then yesterday morning. Like, when you're watching Dublin on Saturday night, Kevin, are you looking at them and thinking they're just missing something? Um, I suppose that this year it's been thrown at them, but you have to you have to think as well that the teams have upped their game. They're trying to stop them at every every angle possible. 
they just seem to keep finding the solution. Um, are they missing some kind of Jim McConnell magic? Possibly. Uh, you know what he did the last time he came off the bench against Mayo. When games are tight, you know, from a Dublin point of view, would you rather have Jim McConnell sitting as an option as opposed to sitting home watching the game? Definitely. For the rest of us who are trying to catch Dublin, uh, would you want to see him coming off the bench? Absolutely not. You mentioned that 2011 game there, Kevin. It seemed that what Cork did on Saturday was the polar opposite of that. They went man-to-man. -man. Was it a little bit too naive, or do you just give them credit for actually going for it? No, I think if you're going to beat this Dublin team, uh, we've seen teams, listen, the last four or five years, teams have sat back. Teams have, you know, went 15 behind the ball. They just find the solution. They're, they're just so smart that they just they, they wait it out. I think that game against Donegal, and, um, when they got caught, they learned more from that game than, than they did any of their victories because they're patient, they, they don't rush things, they just wait for the right time. I think the way Cork approached it the last day is the right way to beat them. Go man be man. And the, the team that can, can, can go with Dublin hard, like Mayo did in those couple of finals, man be man and really, really attack them, I think that's the best opportunity to have a beat them. Are you seeing something in your own boys up in Donegal that they may be able to do that for the full 70-80 minutes? Yeah, possibly. Listen, I don't, I don't want to put too much pressure on our lives because I think we're still building. Um, Definitely have with the engines and have with the strength to go toe to toe with them for at least well, three quarters of the game. I think we do. Um, we spoke about having the real game changers and Jeremy Connolly. We have the likes of Michael Murphy. You need that. You, you know, athleticism and stuff like that will bring you so far. But when the game, when the game's in the melting pot and teams are out in their feet, that's when the magical players usually step up. And we're blessed. We have a few of those. So, listen. It's going, to be, it's going to be tough enough to gear this group and then after that we'll, we'll see where it takes us. Kevin, I just noticed watching that Donegal Mead game at the weekend that Mead, similarly to the week before when they played against Clare, they seemed to run out of gas in the last 10 minutes and that's when Donegal already won that game but before that Mead stuck with them and they did get their goals and their points against them and we saw in the game against Dublin Mead just, they only got four points on the board. Is, there, is the main concern there for Donegal how you defend is that going to be an issue coming up against the likes of Meath and Kerry? Uh, possibly. I know, listen, Declan Bonner has his own style of play and I applaud him for that because it's it's, good, it's a good brand of football to watch. Are we a wee bit open at the back? Possibly. But um, I think we score heavily on the other side. So every day, every game's different. I know we can speak about and say, like, how did Meath do against Dublin and how, they, how did they do against Donegal and compare and contrast. But... You know, every team approaches every team different, if you know what I mean. Like, when, when we go to face carry at the weekend, we'll be set up completely different than we were against Meath. Um, we'll have key players that we need to take out of the game, like we did against Meath. So, um, every game, at a, we'll have to take one one game at a time. But I think that our scoring threat is up there with the best in Ireland. So, if we can tighten the defence, um, we'll not be far away. Where exactly are those weaknesses in the defence? Because Anthony Moyles was on with us on the show yesterday morning. He said that the three and the six positions are weak. Possibly so. Possibly so. I know that, listen, our lads came from a system where we had loads of protection. And maybe, you know, your, your, your man marking skills might have dropped a little along those lines. So, you know, obviously there's more space in the full back line and possibly the, the centre half back. But, you know, the way we play and, and the lads have the legs to get back and to help out there, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. This weekend will test us, there's no doubt about that. Um, Kerry are extremely, extremely talented forward line. So we'll, we'll see where we are after this weekend. I don't think we can read too much into the Meath game. Um, it's in Balbuffet, we're very hard to beat there. Meath are up and coming, yes, but they're definitely not at the level of Kerry. So I think after this weekend, um, we'll see definitely. If there are any weaknesses, Kerry will definitely exploit them. Just on that point that you raised there to start, because it's interesting, Like, is it tougher to be a man marker and a defender the way Gaelic Games is played at the moment? Because it's certainly that's been referred, something that's been referred to in terms of this Kerry team as well. That is it the system that's wrong or is it the individual talent that's wrong? Because no individual talent is going to look good if you've got someone like Lee Keegan running down the throat of your defence. Yeah, we're, I think we're actually coaching it out of the game, to be honest. Um, do you know, I suppose going back, even if you go back maybe as, as, as little as 10 years ago, it was man be man. You were responsible for your own man. If your man scored, it was down to you. Yes, the other lads can help out. But I think the man marking aspect has slightly gone out of the game. Like, can you go through the country and pick seven, eight, nine top man markers? I don't think you can. Um, it's it's all about kind of 
safety in numbers, if you like. So I think coaches throughout Ireland have kind of been leaving leaving the man marking, kind of coaching and, and detail aside. Why do you think that is? I think just every every team now really is playing with at least 10, 11, 12 players inside their, 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 their 45. So the, the space for man marking is your man's not going to get that much space. If you know what I mean, if I'm playing as a wing forward, the chances are I've got a midfielder and an extra wing a wing forward beside me, kind of picking up my slack. If I'm a corner back, I've probably got two centre half backs kind of sweeping in front of me. So the space is not there. So you don't really have to have to worry about your man as such. You mentioned that Donegal will go with a completely different setup when it comes to this Sunday in Crow Park. What is that going to look like? I think we'll def- we'll go out, Kerry. I think you possibly might see more bodies dropping behind the forty-five, like I spoke about there. Um, we'll identify the likes of the threats that Kerry have, and if we leave space in our full forward line, they'll they'll go to town. So that won't happen. You might see a, a slightly more defensive Donegal than we have this last number of years, uh, the last number of games. Sorry, but our key thing is that we have to be able to break with pace because it's okay dropping back and and stay from the carry attack. But when we get that possession, we have to really go for it. Um, and likewise, you know, it's, it's, it's spoken about that our keeper has a having a tremendous season. I think Kerry will seriously, seriously test uh, young Patton this weekend. They'll press his kickouts, and um, you know, we've we've been using that as our platform. So it'd be interesting to see how we can deal with that as well. Did what happened in Clarny spook you a little bit at all, or was it more down to Mayo's underperformance that was the main reason why there was such a comprehensive result in the end? No, I think uh, I didn't listen to they, they were impressive, but I think Mayo look at the, the injuries they have and the guys they were missing, and they've been through a tough road. And if you're in that Mayo camp, even before the fixtures were made, I was kind of kind of making the things out in my head. Like if to say if Kerry managed to beat Donegal this weekend, then it, and and Mayo beat Meath. It comes down to that crunch game in Castle Bar, and um, that's when I, when I was looking at these fixtures, I was in my head thinking, right, that's going to be a tough one. Surely to God, these Mayo players know that their last game is in, in Castle Bar, and you know the way they operate. When you write them off, they're at the more dangerous. So I, I don't think Kerry overly impressed me. Um, they were good, no doubt about it, but I don't know if Mayo were, were at their best. When you said it didn't impress you, was it just because there was a lack of a challenge at times? That the defenders were made to look good, or was there something even about the attacking play that perhaps even looked better than the area that they're really at at the moment? No, their attacking play was good. Um, okay. I thought it was very good, but it's just I don't think Mayo were at the levels that we've you know, expected and become used to watching this last number of years. Um, obviously, they've, they've had a hard few weeks, and I, I don't think the intensity levels they brought to the game. You know, Kerry set the tone from the off and. They dominate around midfield. And, you know, me over a little wayward. I think it was something like 11, 11, uh, we were passing the first half or something. So we're not used to seeing that from me. So we'll see this weekend because Donegal won't be like that. It'll be a stiffer test. So, like I said, we'll, we'll find out a lot more about both teams after this weekend. I just wanted to mention Paddy McBearty because him being absent for the Super 8s last year was one of the biggest reasons why Donegal didn't show up really. And so you look at some of the statistics that have done the rounds about him, he's now the youngest player to reach 100 appearances for his county. Like 100 appearances for Paddy McBearty at this age is absolutely incredible. Like again, sorry to bring up 2011 again, but he was a 17 year old when he comes into the panel that year. And you t- we've spoken a lot about Michael Murphy this summer and him being given the captaincy at such a, such a young age as well. The current crop of youngsters coming through for Donegal. There seems to be a trend in the county where you take a youngster and if they're good enough they're old enough and you trust them definitely and the thing about these guys it's okay saying you know if you're good enough throw you in but the way even when Michael came in as a 17 year old and when Patrick came in like those guys honestly they looked as if they were 23, 24 hmm. they were physically well built the maturity was un- unreal um, you know and to, like, to go to see what they've gone on and done is incredible Patrick had a, a tough year last year with, with injury I think he's just slowly finding form. Jimmy Brennan has stepped up the plate as well this year. So if those three guys you know, catch fire inside, we're, we're as good as any team in the country up front. So it's massive, massive um, positive for, for Donegal if Patrick's back. And like I said, the maturity and, and, and his young shoulders and, and, and how he's just gone about his career so far has just been it's great for, for, for us, you know. Yeah, watching, the, they actually tweeted out the video of the goal at the weekend. Kevin and it was just it was brilliant to watch the way he shook the marker 
he took possession of the ball and ran a goal and just finished the finishing was brilliant and I was kind of thinking about um, thinking back to a time when Alan Brogan I think wrote a piece about how he kind of felt that the art of forward play in GA had changed so much from the time he started playing football that he the reason he was such a good footballer Alan Brogan was because he was small he was wiry he was able to dodge challenges he, he wasn't like going he wasn't clashing with defenders he was able to dodge them is Paddy McBurty a kind of one of those old school forwards? Is that what makes him so good? He definitely is, and he probably admit that himself. And even when the whole defensive football came in and it was a massive thing, Paddy kind of stuck to his guns. Um, he loved to play ball. He loved to. His job, as far as he was concerned, was he was a score getter, get the ball, go for goal, and, and do damage. And even the way he took the goal the last day, there was possibly a chance to cross it. You know, put it across the, the face of the goal, but there was no way he he was going to finish it, and it was, it was top class. And he was, you're right, he's like Alan Broker, a pure footballer. And I think with the the way the game's going now, and especially when we get to Crow Park with, with more space, you'll see Paddy definitely come out and shell a lot more. It's incredible to think Paddy McBride was left on the bench for an Ireland final. Yeah, definitely. I suppose looking back in that one was the right call, possibly not. But you know, sometimes these things work for you, sometimes they don't. Um, Paddy would have been extremely disappointed to be on, on the bench because obviously he was good enough to start that day. But it's just one of those things that you make and you hope that the decisions you make and you hope that they work out. But unfortunately, that day they just it, it didn't, you know. So, kind of as a final point, then, what are you doing this Sunday if you're carrying in terms of a defensive setup, in terms of any particular details for defenders when it comes to the likes of Murphy, when it comes to the likes of McBeardy, when it comes to Jamie Brennan? There's a lot of talent there. There is. Well, that's the key for Kerry. Like, the question I would have over Kerry is. Obviously, their their backline are they tight enough? Those three guys have to be man marked. Murphy has to be taken completely out of the game. Likewise, Paddy Paddy McBurty and Jimmy Brennan. So, have Kerry got three guys to do the, those jobs? We'll soon find out. Because if you don't take, if you do take them out of the game, it's a massive chunk out of our armory. But if you don't, then those lads will will, will do damage. Are Donegal topping the Super Eight group, Kevin? Um. I don't think so, honestly. Um, I don't know if we're at, if we're really at the ready at the level yet to be carry this this uh, weekend in Crow Park. Personally, I think it's going to go down to the last game in Castle Bar, and like I said, there that's going to be extremely tough. So you know, I'm confident going up to the, this this weekend. Um, can we beat Kerry? Yes, we definitely can. You know, but I just think that Kerry may have a little too much this this weekend for us. Kevin, good stuff. Thanks a million for taking the call. Cheers. Thank you.